The five on Fox News are going to discuss Congressman Trey Raydell's cocaine use. And actually, I should say I've been pronouncing his name wrong. It's not Raydell. It's uh, Rattle, I think. Yeah, I think that's the way they pronounce it. I've heard a couple different people pronounce it that way who know him, so <laughs> I'm obviously incorrect on this. Uh, so they're going to talk about his cocaine use and what they think should happen. And what they say is kind of surprising. Eric, um, do you think that he should just go ahead and resign uh, or go through the treatment think, and see uh, how it goes? I think two years ago I said he should resign. And, and as I've said on, on here recently, that as I'm getting more into this libertarian thing, uh, look, I, 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 we, we've lost the war on drugs. We, I think we've got to stop fighting the war on drugs. Let him deal with his treatment. Um, if he doesn't think he can function properly, he should st certainly step aside and let someone else be an interim congressman, and he'll come back when he's ready. And, and as far as what he's doing with his family, John Boehner, I agree with him completely. Greg, he, he says he's an addict, that he's had problems like this for a long time. Is there, how do you make a distinction, or do we not, about casual drug use and somebody who is an addict who might be, not be able to perform their duties of a job that they were elected? If, I, I believe it if, if it has an impact on your professional life and if it has an impact on your personal life. Other than that, who cares? I don't think he's, you know, he says he's let people down. You've only let people down if you are hard on people who also use recreational drugs, if you're a hypocrite. I think he's called the war on drugs naive. But he's and he's he wanted to reform the mandatory minimum. So he's not a hypocrite, I guess. But he also was for a bill that allowed drug testing of food stamp recipients, mm -hmm. which means, therefore, he should be tested for drugs as well, because he's also a beneficiary of our money. He gets paid mm -hmm. and everybody's got an addiction. As you can tell, Boehner's is uh, tanning gel. So uh, I don't know. And I think I don't think he should lose his job. I don't think he should lose his job. Everybody gets a chance. Um, life shouldn't be ruined because trying to find some relief or oblivion from he this horrible his world. Drug deal. Wow, uh, that was actually really interesting there. So first of all, let's just get the elephant in the room out of the way, which is the uh, hypocrisy. If this was a Democrat who had used cocaine or used drugs and then they were, you know, oh, uh, I'm going to step down, I'm going to go to treatment, I love my family, this and that. Do you think they would really be this soft on him? Do you think they would be this understanding and they would have this nuanced of a conversation? I really, really doubt it. In fact, I think they would be much harsher. Now, with that being said, I think they're actually, uh, that was a pretty good conversation. I think they made a lot of good points. Eric Bowling, out of nowhere, deciding to be a libertarian, he said, quote, we got to stop fighting the war on drugs. Wow. <laughs> Yes, I totally agree, and that may be the smartest thing you've ever said. Remember, this is a guy who uh, argued that the war in Iraq was the best thing that George W. Bush ever did. Not the smartest guy in the world, but apparently even a broken clock is right twice a day. Uh, and even the, the question that Dana Perino asked there, I think, is an interesting and smart question. She said, where do you draw the line, or do you, between casual drug use versus an addict? And uh, I actually have a pretty good answer for that. The overwhelming majority of people who use drugs, any drugs, whether we're talking about uh, cocaine, marijuana, or alcohol, and coffee. Coffee is a drug. Alcohol is a drug. In fact, alcohol is a really, really bad drug for you. It's worse than a lot of illegal drugs. Uh, but the majority of people who use all those are casual drug users. They don't have a problem. Now, there are plenty of people who do have a problem, but it's pretty obvious when somebody is an actual addict. Like Gutfeld said there, what would happen is it would actually cut into their uh, private life and uh, in their public life, so they wouldn't be able to function at work. They would have to do the thing 24-7. Uh, they wouldn't be normal, well-adjusted members of society. It would actually ruin relationships and things like that. So that's when you know somebody's an addict, when it's right in front of you and meets that criteria. And also, uh, a lot of it has to do with when they admit it to themselves that I have a problem and I can't handle moderation. But the majority of people can handle moderation. And going back for a second to Bowling's point, it's, it, it's become like a duh comment at this point to say we need to end the war on drugs. Because we have spent over a trillion dollars, over a trillion dollars since uh, the war on drugs began, now, what results have we gotten? More people are using drugs. There are more first-time users. The price of drugs is less. 
and the content is more pure. So by every single possible objective measure by which you can determine if, if the war on drugs has been a success or a failure, it is a blatant and overt failure. And uh, I mean, I haven't even brought up the freedom aspect to this, where if you actually want to live in a society that considers itself free, you can't punish people for doing something to their own bodies that they choose to do when they are not hurting anybody else. I mean, how many lives have been flat out ruined because of drug policy in the U.S., where they can lock somebody with mandatory minimum sentences and things like that, where they can lock people up for years and years or their lives for, do, for uh, having possession or being drug dealers and things like that? No, the problem is violent crime. People should be focusing on robbery. People should be focusing on uh, murder and things like that. And whenever people try to make the connection, like Bill O'Reilly always does, like, well, drugs are linked to violent crime. You always have to remember that is not true because the only reason it is linked is because it's illegal. If it wasn't illegal, there wouldn't be that connection. Now, am I just, is, am I just, just theorizing to come to that conclusion? No, my evidence is uh, alcohol prohibition in the U.S. When alcohol was illegal, it was because it was in the black market that criminals would sell it that uh, when there was a dispute, it would be settled with Tommy guns. And if it's legal, it would be settled by guys wearing suits and ties going to court. So you have violent crime when it is illegal, not to mention when it's unregulated, they used to cut the alcohol with toxic chemicals in a bathtub and people would die from drinking it. When it's not uh, illegal, then you can have efficient regulation to make sure nobody dies from it. And you can have civilized people who are businessmen who sell the product as opposed to gangsters who sell the product. So the problem is because it is illegal.